Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, a special look back at the year 2019. the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and today we look back at 2019, the year that was. Each week, we come to the studio with one goal in mind, and that is to inform, educate, and alert you, our viewers, to the silliness and the seriousness of Alabama state politics. A lot happens in a year. Politics affects everything we do. So today we'd like to take a journey back and look at some of the stories that shaped 2019. That part of that was better roads and bridges, a better economy, better education system, and a better standards of ethics. The Republicans are so concerned about fueling, Bill, like you said, those national fires that they're putting forth racist legislation, they're putting forth anti-woman re legislation, they're putting forth stupid stuff that's unconstitutional. It gets out of committee and gets to the floor and it makes the Democrats mad. And so then the Democrats filibuster and nothing gets done. So if the Republican leadership would stop these stupid bills from getting out of committee, we could get something done on the floor. And Speaker McCutcheon would do well to follow that advice. Well, for those of us who stood out in the freezing cold to enjoy Kay Ivey's big day, it was quite an event. I have, Susan, have not seen the governor that excited mm -hmm. or have that much energy in some time, and she was really on her game. She was absolutely on her game, gave a 20-minute speech, did an excellent job, brought up a lot of good issues that Alabama needs to look at going forward with this new administration. Uh, she really, I mean, she was she was up for it all. She looked great. And it's like the Lynn Park Memorial, Charlie, was built in 1905. <laughs> That's four years after we passed the 1901 Constitution, which anybody with any brains will tell you is one of the ra most racist constitutions on the face of the earth. And we can't even get rid of the racist language because it'll remove a child's right to have a public education yeah. if we do. Other silliness. That... That Constitution was written as a response to Reconstruction. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, you, you have been on the side of protecting the monuments. I, I'm sure you appreciate Beth's argument. What, what, what do you see happening in Birmingham? Well, you know, I see it from a different side. You know, there, there's a lot of people in Birmingham that want to preserve the history. Um, do you live in Birmingham, Jonathan, or do you live in the suburbs? Well, I live, you know, <laughs> walk across the street, I'm in Birmingham. So, uh, but long story short, you know. Outside agitator. Outside yeah. agitator. <laughs> 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 a couple weeks ago, uh, or last week, they had a hearing at this so-called uh, Ethics Reform and Clarification Commission. Mm -hmm. Barf at that one. But what had happened is Greg Canfield, Secretary of, uh, of, of uh, Commerce. Commerce. And the Economic Development Association of Alabama went to them and said, we need a special exception under the ethics rule. And Susan, remember last session they passed a, a, a law, HB 317, mm -hmm. which said that site developers are not responsible uh, or not held accountable under the ethics law. Now they want that expanded. And boy, don't they want it expanded. I think it covers every citizen in the state of Alabama. <laughs> if you so much as sneeze in the direction of a company, you don't have to register as a lobbyist. Well, Kay Ivey, we went to a press conference this week, I sat there with Governor Kay Ivey, and she is determined to build three new men's correctional facilities, Susan, come hell or legislative high water, isn't she? <laughs> She's absolutely set on doing it, and I'm telling you, She's going to find a way to get it done, regardless of what the legislature thinks about it, I think. Well, you know, Jonathan, uh, Governor Ivey has the option 
of, of building these prisons without the legislator's approval. She can do it under what's called a lease build agreement. She has the authority to do that. You know, we ask her about, well, the legislature appropriates, you know, gives her the money to do these things. She said, well, the legislature appropriates, the executive executes, I'm getting ready to execute. Reminds me of the president, doesn't it? it well, it kind of does. Yeah, I, was, I actually was going to say, you know, it was a lot like Donald Trump. He's like, if you don't do what uh, we need done, I'll just do it myself. Now, you know, in looking at the state legislature, it's probably not the best idea to go around their back and order them around and boss them around because, you know, they control the budget and they control a lot of things that the governor does. And so I, I don't think I would do that. But I think by asking the legislature first and saying, here's my plan, I have a great plan, I just need your backing, I think it's the right way to do it. But if they don't do it, we have to do something with prisons. So, you know, I can't say that I would blame her for using her authority. You know, people don't put a lot of uh, priority on prisons and prison conditions. But if we're ever to, and this is the liberal side of me, uh, faint liberal side of me, prisons, yes, they're punitive, but there are some prisoners who you can probably actually reform. Right. But under our current conditions, there's nothing reformatory about our prisons. Might we suggest that those justices get off their fat black robes and send Mike Hubbard to jail? Please. All right, and it allows them then to go in and get their class three licenses for things. If they want to pursue that, if or they can keep the status quo, which is working out pretty well for them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the but, reason they don't really want the table games and all that, they'll take them. Mm -hmm. But they're this is just hoodwinking the people. Yeah. They want a straight lottery because they don't want any competition. Then they want to force a compact with the state mm -hmm. so that they can be sure that they're legitimate. Yes. I mean, and the reality of a straight lottery is that the state's not going to make any money off that no. without scratch-offs and all yeah. the other no. electronics. SB. Well, they're, they're going to do the scratch-off. But yeah. what they want to do, they want to do a straight lottery without the, the casino games. Yeah. Okay, so they want it without the casinos that are over there. And that then also benefits Port Creeks because, as has happened in other states, they can then go and as part of that compact with the state, they are guaranteed to be able to sell those scratch-offs and have those video yep. lottery terminals. Governor Kay Ivey has the first leg of a big win. Her infrastructure passed the House, which was something that many people thought was not possible. But this governor has proven that she is in it to win and in it to run the state in the way she wants to do it. Chip, what do you think? I mean, and this thing moved quickly. I mean, the state, the state was on Tuesday. She called a special session. They went through about as fast as you can get a bill through. I mean, you have to read it one day, you have to read it a second day, and then you can vote on it, and that's what they did. I mean, there was no delay in this. They had this planned out, obviously, and planned out very well. They were whipping votes. Um, I would say that this is probably one of the most streamlined uh, efforts to get something through the legislature in a long time. Jack, I know you're not fond of the bill. Not at all. Uh, but as well, far as... Funeral purple today. You know, but as far as from a from a, a leadership standpoint, and I know you're not fond of it. No. But that was a pretty smart way of getting it, it through. Well, yeah, it was smart and it was underhanded. Okay. And I'll just say that. Yeah. When you call a special session within a session, putting pressure on there, everybody to get it through and get it done without much time for people like us who are in the general public to read it and understand it and uh, and express our concern one way or the other. I, I think it was a little sneaky. What is your number one priority as Lieutenant Governor yeah, right now? Absolutely. Our number one priority is uh, workforce development. And, you know, the reason we kind of identified workforce development as our number one priority is when we went around the state talking to people, the number one thing we heard from business owners around this state is the number one limiting factor to growth is people. That, you know, if they could hire more people, they could grow their business 20, 30, 40 percent. And so, you know, that's an easy thing to solve, but it's complex and it involves a lot of different layers. And so, you know, we've already hit the ground running. We're working with the governor's office and they're great. A lot happens in a year and there's a lot more to go back and look at. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Energy Institute of Alabama promotes reliable, affordable, and clean energy to help grow our economy. 
create high-paying jobs, and build public support for Alabama's energy industry. The Energy Institute of Alabama is the best source of energy industry information and how it affects households across the state, from convenient energy production to alternative fuels to solar power and beyond. What are you doing today, babe? I thought I'd head down to the lake with the guys, do a little fishing. Of course, none of us will be wearing our seat belts. I'll lose control of the truck, wrap it around a tree, and kill us all. Okay. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You know, politics affects everything. From the car we drive, the clothes we wear, and especially the freedoms we hold dear. Here in Alabama, our motto is, we dare defend our rights. Of course, we can't defend a right that we're not aware of. And many times, the job of the press and this show is to show you where lawmakers may be infringing on your rights. Right now, we want to take a look back, another walk down memory lane that we call 2019. And all of a sudden, Dale Marsh, Senator Dale Marsh, President Pro Tem, who is the head of the Senate, mm -hmm. who was a co-sponsor on the bill, mm -hmm. Josh, he all of a sudden comes forward and said, I don't like this bill anymore. And he and Greg Albritton, Greg Albritton from Atmore, Porch Creek Indian, Greg Albritton, mm -hmm. introduced a bill that strips out everything but paper lottery only. Yeah, and, and it might as well have come with the PCI logo at the top of it, yeah. uh, you know, because it really is their their bill. That's yeah. what they want in it because it continues their monopoly, guarantees them that. And as a matter of fact, it will guarantee them to move forward and pretty much stamp out any competition that they would have, that they currently have, what little that they do have. A bill was dropped in the Senate, which when I read it, I was at first angry, second depressed, and sickened because the the Senate, some people in the Senate want to take the ethics bill that was written in 2010, a promise by the Republicans that they would stand by the toughest ethics laws in the state. They took that bill and gutted it like a feral hog on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. And in it, they did two very important things. All the statutes under which Former Speaker of the House, Mike Hubbard, was convicted. They just blew them up so that no one else in the history of Alabama, as long as these laws stand, would ever be convicted again. Our friend Jack Campbell has been, uh, had some health issues lately, but we're happy to report that he is well on the men and headed toward a full recovery. But he wanted us to say, hi, darn, to everybody. <laughs> And, he's offending uh, all the nurses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard he was awake uh, and alert making fun of Del Marsh earlier. Yeah. Yes, he was. So. <laughs> it, it looks like ding dong, the ethics bill is dead. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, that thing was just corrupt. I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's no, an understatement. Uh, nobody could really figure out exactly, you know, what the what the whole goal here was because I'm, I'm pretty sure passage was never uh, at the end of this <laughs> thing. And, and some... I guess some more rational people uh, in in our state legislature. The surprise there are some uh, took over. Uh, you know, Cam Ward said it was dead in his his committee. Yeah. Uh, then I believe Mac McCutcheon said he's never going to make it to the floor in, in the House. Yeah. And so 
Yeah, it seems as though it's dead. Uh, you know, not from a lack of effort of Dale Marsh and uh, and Greg Albright, no. including a pretty embarrassing radio interview with Dale Marsh, <laughs> uh, this week, which did not go well. You know, we we've talked a lot about the Porch Creek. Indians having a monopoly over gaming, which they actually got because Bob Riley thought it was a good idea to try to put everybody outside of business. But the state legislature, Beth, uh, the Republican state legislature, has now uh, passed a bill that if it becomes law, will in fact pretty much guarantee that that monopoly stays in existence. They've tried to write everybody else out of that bill. And, and it comes to mind that we have Republican free market players here. That's what they tell us. That, that want to give a monopoly to one group over everybody else. Making sense to you? It doesn't, um, except for that when something doesn't make sense, we follow the money. Yeah. Um, and so if you look up how much Porch Creek is given to some of our legislators, it might make a little more sense. The success or failures of this session mm -hmm. might go back to the origins when Governor Kay Ivey called a special session just right after the state of the state. And really, for the next two weeks, people were cajoled, bribed, and threatened to pass an infrastructure gas tax. Mm -hmm. And I think that was sort of a body blow to the, the body politic. And, and it set a tone that I don't think you're ever recovered from. No, I don't think so. And, and really, you know, if take them at their word, this, uh, the, the cajoling and bribing went back much further in the, in the past yeah. uh, there. But Beth, I've been saying it for almost two years now, run, Roy, run. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a second term for Senator Jones. I'm very yeah. excited about it. I thought you'd be happy about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But then, now, seriously, Roy Moore is running mm -hmm. for the U.S. Senate. It's a do-over for him. I think it's a revenge run because... He, this week, came out and, and said that Richard Shelby was the reason he lost the last time. Uh, he, he also <laughs> said that he is running again. Yes. If Jess, Jess Sessions jumps into the race, that could be the wild card. But maybe not. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I it, think it could be. It could be. It could. And I mean, it's been rumored for a while. I don't know. I, all those Trumple Stiltskin people, they think that he's. Stiltskin. They think that he screwed over the dear leader or something. And so but, I don't but, know. But don't he's know. still popular here. He's not as popular as he was. But it's 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 a. And his name ID is through the roof. Yeah. yeah so. And you know and what? He can fundraise. And yeah, he oh, can yeah. fundraise. And the other thing is, he gets all his seniority back if Mitch McConnell decides to give it to him. Hey, Jack. Hey, Jack. How y'all doing? Hey. Welcome back. Thanks. Good to be back. You're looking good. It's good to be semi-normal. You know, uh, we, we've been at this uh, nearly six years, 300 episodes. To our viewers, our sponsors, and to our team, happy 300th episode, right? Hey. Good job, okay. everybody. Uh, shocker. <laughs> the Alabama Democratic Party is in disarray. No. Yes, yes, I know it's shocking. It's hard to imagine. I mean, last weekend. You mean that a bunch of adults can get in the same room and pull the shenanigans they pulled last Saturday? Yeah, I know. Well, there's no two party system in Alabama because, I mean, they asked Worley why she wasn't raising funds. Well, because the Republicans are. No, 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 no. It's because nobody can trust them to get the stuff going right when these jokers are still in office and all this chaos going well, on. Who wants to give them money? There looks like there is end in sight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm to the reign of Nancy Worley and Joe Reed. Yeah. But there's also a lot of moving parts that are very difficult for those of us who don't follow democratic politics every yeah. day. If you could kind of catch us up with where the story lies. Yeah, lies. well, if you don't follow it every day and you'd like a good example, just light your trash can on fire. Uh, <laughs> but no, um, the- uh, In the middle of the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, and float it down the river. Uh, no. Well, this past week, Susan Britt was honored by Business uh, Alabama Magazine as one of the top 25 women in media. Congratulations, Susan. Thank you. Uh, this past so week. We're at how many now? At six. That's six. That makes seven, I guess, right? Uh, so we were at six, and now we're... I think we're six, and now seven. Okay. And whatever it is, it's a large number of people running for the U.S. Senate. Jeff Sessions, Susan, has thrown his hat in the ring. He wants his old job back. <laughs> Trump is not very happy, and so it looks to me that this could be another tweet storm 
from hell coming from the D.C. area, and Jeff Sessions is bringing it right home to Alabama. Our special guest today is Representative Chris England, the newly elected chair of the Alabama Democratic Party. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having the time to come on. Yeah. And, you know, being the first African-American chair in, in 2019 is, is, is remarkable in and of itself. But actually, the, the main thing isn't really, it's, a, it's not about me. It's about the people that you identified that joined the party on uh, November the 2nd. And uh, that energy, that energy is actually in our room now, sitting at our table. This week, uh, the Port, or last week, the Porch Creek Indian on Veterans Day uh, came out with a proposal that they claim will bring the state a billion dollars in the first year. Now, I like to go back to the fuzzy math. You remember fuzzy math? Oh, I do. I don't understand what they have as a bargaining chip here because we can do everything we need to do without them at the table, except for the fact that they own half our legislature. Mike Hubbard was convicted four years ago, or in 2016, and was sent to prison, sentenced to prison four years ago. And it still languishes, Susan, before these justices who do not practice justice. They do not. Can you let our audience know what you've been doing and some Absolutely. of your thoughts of this new direction with BCA? So I, you know, I really appreciate that. It has certainly been an interesting um, 10 and a half, 11 months. It's been challenging, but it's also been fun and exciting. Um, we have a lot of opportunity in front of us, and we've really tried to take this as um, the way to kind of bring people back together and to rebuild an organization that can really affect change in the state. It's amazing how many stories we can cover in a year, and it's amazing how many of these stories are just crazy but have to be told. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. What a great opportunity for your success. Adding half a million highly skilled employees to our workforce by 2025 is how we stay ahead in Alabama. Our economy is stronger than it's been in years, and a skilled workforce is more important than ever. Things move fast, so choose your path. Your success is waiting, plus a great future for Alabama. Success plus. Go for it. A lot can change in five years, except those smile lines you treated with Bellafill, because that's about how long Bellafill will keep them smooth and filled. Five years. Now you can always look your best without all those injections, appointments, and costs. Bellafill is the only dermal filler that stimulates and maintains collagen growth long term. Now time is on your side. Hey man, what are you doing today? Um, playing the game. Thought I'd go out for a drive later, maybe. Text some friends while I'm doing it. Scroll through social media. Kill a family four and a half on collision. Cool, man. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Sometimes on the show, we make you laugh. We might even make you cry. We always hope to make you think. But we've found over the years that the bitter medicine of politics sometimes goes down a little easier with some laughter. You know, as I often say, uh, 
you know, in God we trust, everyone else we scrutinize. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Marshall's was the most insincere speech I had ever heard because he said he was a fighter. And th this guy is a fighter like Jello pudding is. You know, it's like, Ooh. oh, you mean just jiggle around. But anyway, he's fighting. There are outliers there, but they are, as a party, their response to these people going to jail is to rewrite the law exactly. so they'll stop going to jail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's what they're doing. I mean, you have to register who you're representing and all that. Well, they need to keep that quiet. Yeah. You know, not everybody needs to know about that. It could blow the deal. Horse crap. Wow. <laughs> I think she's passionate about that, Jack. Yeah. Well, I think I'm passionate about ethics laws they don't think apply to them. Jonathan, you're, you're becoming a regular. Well, I enjoy it. It's great. Thank you. Yeah. Having me. Jack, you are uh, irregular as usual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not actually, lately, it's been real good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're starting session, so everything's downhill from there, right? Yeah. <laughs> How's your shamrock, Jack? I uh, hadn't checked it lately. Oh, uh, well. Uh, that Mobile Leprechaun, we're still looking for that guy. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, the difference between covering porn and politics in Alabama is you have to go behind the scenes in politics to find out who's getting screwed. The Republicans in 2010 ran on jobs, 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 mm -hmm. which it was their mantra. Of course, we can't use mo that word mantra because that's from Hinduism, which <laughs> has to do with yoga, and we can't have yoga because yoga is illegal <laughs> in our schools. For a year, for every for a year, Jim Ziegler was the only person that was going after the toll road. Jim Ziegler is the troll under the bridge. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute. The uh, attorney for the state stands up and declares that Alabama's prisons are not overcrowded. Yeah, we also heard Mike Hubbard's attorney declare that he was innocent. We'll yes. see how that worked out. <laughs> Welcome to the voice of Alabama politics. Where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by the V team. Welcome all. Well, that was a bit of a surprise, but y'all mocked was, me all the time behind my back. Certainly. I like that it took Susan 12 takes to get it, it right. It wasn't 12. It was like four. <laughs> We're going to move over to uh, Tamitha <laughs> Eisner, who's trying to revitalize the... He's trying to bring kale to the Democratic Party right now. He's trying to bring <laughs> some semblance of sanity back to the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and Charlie, she's having about as much luck as I am bringing this show back in order. She's really not. I mean, and they have... Yeah, I know. I'm trying to keep it going. You know, <laughs> despite, despite a lot of the disorganization... This is what a show looks like when it's melting down. <laughs> well, you're the watching The V. We'll be right back with more news and opinions. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You know, we were trying to talk about the Democratic Party, but uh, we couldn't get organized. <laughs> yeah, that was a typical example of the Democratic Party. Yeah, you know, that's there. like trying to segue between nutrition and Nancy Worley. Uh, <laughs> I'm not fat shaming anybody. Well, 2019 is almost in the rearview mirror. But before we go, we want to remember those we lost this past year. From all of us here at The V, we want to thank our friends and our sponsors, and mainly you, our viewers. And we also want to wish you a very happy new year. And always remember, you watch us because we watch them. Looking back on all the years gone by how I loved, how I've lost, and when I cried. The memories in my heart I will carry with the scars as my light for my journey on. In the days of old